This is how it used to be. Memories of St Andrew's Docks and the Hesel Road. Looking down from Brighton Street flyover, you could get a good view of the old St Andrew's Docks, now rotting away. To the west you could see the old Icelandic market. At the base of the flyover used to stand Cullen's coffee shop. Opposite the north, the l fish dump where early orders were dispatched to all parts of the country. Eastwards, Liverpool Street looked across the dock to the south, dry side, where Hull Fish Meal and Oil Company was visible. Big gaps in the buildings marked where Hull Ice Company once stood. Shift riggers, trawler owners' offices, stores, Stanton's coffee shop, everything to meet the needs of the fishing industry. Once a beehive of activity and now crumbling away. To the southeast, the lock pits still bear the scars from trawlers scrubbing along sides. Yes, it's not long ago we can remember seven or eight trawlers queuing up for a berth, swinging into the lock one by one, headlines parting with the weight of the catch. Stern ropes tow, telegraphs ringing, Engines full of stern and the throng of crew's relatives, taxi drivers and sightseers on the lockhead. Trollers gliding into the dock as though to say, I'm safely home, with crews jumping ashore, sea bag in one hand, bass of bond in the other, their hair still wet with soap in their ears from the first wash and shave for three weeks. The engines would ring off for a few hours rest, but at 2am, bobbers would swarm aboard like pirates, boarding party, for the fish had to be ashore before the sunrise. Come 7.30am, and all hell was let loose. Fish merchants, barrel lads, filleters, salesmen, trawler owners and crews, 18,000 to 20,000 kits per day, sold and dispatched to all corners of the land. Dry side, trawlers mostly sailed on the morning tides after the pubs closed and before they reopened, otherwise they'd never get a crew down there. Ships bunkered, iced up, provisioned, sirens screaming, buzzers blowing, steam raised, there'd be as many going out as coming in. With the last one out, Dryside would be deserted, but not for long. Those docks were as busy as Heathrow Airport. Hazel Road at lunchtime. Best as it seems, shops, stalls, pubs, trading and thronged with people. Come cook to high time, and cup fever brought well-wishing telegrams from men at sea for local teams. Enough to fill the boardrooms. Christmas season and clubs and pubs would be full of more telegrams wishing everyone all the best from those spending Christmas far away. Hull Trollum and who's had a job brought wealth and prosperity to the city and who's valour put Hull on the map, made Hesel Road their own. And looking back now that it's all gone, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. No more Trollers disasters to make children fatherless and break the hearts of the mothers and wives. Hull had so many of these, and on dark and stormy nights, you old sea dogs can go to bed and not worry that your lives depend on those brave lads on watch. Yet still the public grumbled about the price of fishing that those courageous men paid the high price of all to catch, their life and limb. Someday, perhaps through recognition and tribute, will be paid to the proud and vanished industry and those who lost their lives fishing the cruel seas. John Crimlis.